Hello, my name is Callum Walter. I'm with the Department of Geological Sciences and Geological Engineering at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. And this talk will be on augmenting geological field mapping and interpretation with real-time 3D digital outcrop modeling. As a project overview, what we looked at doing was equipping a field geologist with a handheld 3D scanner and determining a strategy where real-time digital outcrop modeling can augment traditional geologic field mapping. So to do this, the sensor we used was a dot product DPI-10, which you can see here, which is then carried around the field by the field geologist gathering outcrop models. A little bit about these digital hand scanners. So the back side of them, which faces the outcrop, has all of the sensors, which includes an infrared light source, an RGB camera, an infrared light detector, as well as a high resolution RGB camera. And the front side, which hosts the user interface, is a field tablet. How the hand scanner actually creates the 3D model is by painting the scene with infrared light points, as you can see here. And then the infrared detector on the scanner converts these points into XYZ spatial components. So in addition to this, there's also the RGB camera, which can give us the intensity, red, green, and blue light for each of these individual points within the scene. And in total, there are seven outputs that we get for each of these individual points that make up the model. This video demonstrates how the scanning procedure is performed at an outcrop in the field and is done by the field geologist physically having to move the scanner throughout the scene in order to create a 3D digital outcrop model. When the scan is completed, the field geologist can instantly look at the 3D point cloud and outcrop model in real time. What is highlighted in this video are the individual points within the 3D model that make up the scan. And in this scan, there was roughly around 13.7 million points, with the outcrop being approximately 7 meters long by 2 meters high, and in total, the scan taking about 5 minutes. This slide demonstrates the user interface that is displayed to the operator as they conduct a scan in real time. Now, the user interface provides an interactive feedback display that is updated throughout the scanning procedure where the yellow and green coloration represents the different data point densities that you get throughout the scan with the green color being a higher data point density uh, that has been collected by the scanner. Once the operator has completed a scan, they can automatically go into the tablet and visualize the model that they've created. And then one of the very useful things that you can do is annotate the different features that you see within the scan. So in this case, adding one of the lithological classifications as unit B within the scan in real time and while you're still in front of the outcrop. A little bit about the hand scanner specifications. So the battery life we found was roughly around four hours. This is with continuous scanning. Uh, the scanner weight is two kilograms, which is very manageable, carrying it around the field all day. The range that we use throughout these scans and that we show throughout the presentation was from the long range scanner, which has a 50 centimeter to four meter uh, acquisition range. A typical scan time would be anywhere from 2 minutes to 10 minutes per outcrop, and this would typically depend on the outcrop size. So whether it was roughly a 2x2 two two meter outcrop, this would typically take about 2 minutes, versus, say, an outcrop that was 3 meters high by 10 meters long, this would take more along the lines of 10 minutes. So spatial resolution for the scanner, the X and Y components are roughly around 0.1 centimeters, while the depth resolution is approximately 0.5 centimeters. Looking at this idea of real-time 3D digital outcrop modeling, we know that the hand scanners trade an increased mobility in the field for a relative decrease in the scan resolution and quality. So some of the questions we kind of wanted to ask ourselves throughout this project was, why would a field geologist want to pack this tool and bring it into the field? You know, what are some of the geologic applications of the scanner's resolution and quality? And how can this technology be incorporated into a field mapping workflow or exploration campaign? To best demonstrate how these scanners can augment geologic field mapping, we brought them into the field and performed a case study within the Gould Lake area. 
Now, prior to heading out into the field, one would typically gather some background information, such as the satellite imagery of the area of interest or a topographic map. And if you are so fortunate, one might be able to get airborne LIDAR data, with this figure showing the hill-shaded 2-meter digital elevation model of the Gould Lake area. But of course, the most important thing to look at is the regional geology, so you have a pretty good idea of what you're looking at when you go out into the field on Traverse. In this case, the field site is within a metamorphic assemblage, with the major geologic units being a granitic and quartz of gneiss and some marble. So one of the first things you would do when going out into the field is planning your traverse, and this is shown by the purple line in this figure. At the end of the field day, one would then typically take all the outcrop locations that they have and transfer them onto a digital copy or the office copy of the geologic map that they're making. Adding to this, one would incorporate the different lithologies that they observed while in the field, as well as any geologic measurements such as the strike and dip of Nisic layering in this case. These observations would typically make up the backbone of any geologic map and would be the primary information that is recorded from the field. Now, however, where the 3D digital outcrop models can be incorporated and augment the typical geologic mapping procedure is by giving a spatial context for each of these different outcrop uh, lithologies, locations, and also the different uh, geologic measurements that you gather in the field. The first 3D digital outcrop model that we'll go through is located at the start of the traverse. And this is a photo of it. It's a quartzofeldspathic gneiss and is a pretty representative unit of what this uh, lithology looks like within the field area. Looking at the 3D digital point cloud model of outcrop number one, we can quickly see that it becomes easier to visualize and interact with the 3D spatial relationships that make up this outcrop. And this is in comparison to viewing a series of photographs of the outcrop as is shown on the left hand side. Additionally, a beneficial feature is that the 3D digital outcrop model can automatically assign a coordinate system to the outcrop and within this outcrop scan this is showing the northern, easting and vertical axis of the outcrop. This is the second digital outcrop model that we incorporated into the field mapping campaign. You can see is this is again another quartzal footspathic nice and has a lot of joint sets and kind of blocky texture to it and this is where i really feel that the uh, 3d digital outcrop models shine and can really you can gain a better spatial sense of what the outcrops actually look like over uh, photos so looking at this outcrop here there's photos on the left hand side and the 3d model again being rotated it through here what we can see looking at it and being able to manipulate this 3D model is that it's a lot easier to get a sense of the 3D blocky geometry and texture as well as the size of these different blocks relative to one another in the actual model. And a very important thing is that when we look at the back side of the outcrop, we can see the crevices that are actually picked up by this infrared scanner. So they can see things that we might not necessarily be able to see with just photos or the naked eye even, which is a benefit. Looking at the third 3D digital outcrop model, there was a specific measurement that was associated to this outcrop within the field. Zooming into a photograph of outcrop number three, what we can see is a beautiful exposure of some Nisic layering. So within the 3D outcrop model, what we can go ahead and do is annotate, you know, this is a quartzal feldspathic nice outcrop, and then go ahead and when we're in the field, take the measurement on this outcrop, and then within the 3D model, once we've scanned, actually put in the type of measurement we took and specifically where it was. So in this case, this being nice glaring and it having a strike of approximately 25 degrees and a dip of roughly 32 degrees. So this can all be incorporated directly into these 3D point cloud models with tags showing exactly where this measurement was taken within the field. And this can all be done in real time 
while the geologist is still on the outcrop to kind of verify these measurements or add additional features as they observe them. And this really allows the geologist to be able to bring a lot more of this information back from the field as opposed to just writing it down on notes on the side. This is the fourth and final 3D digital outcrop model that is of the quartzofeldspathic gneiss. So looking at outcrop number four, what we wanted to demonstrate was how high resolution images such as this can be incorporated into the 3D digital outcrop models and more specifically how this can automatically be geo-referenced. Diving into the 3D digital outcrop model, while scanning, uh, high resolution images can be taken with the tablet and directly geo-referenced into the 3D digital outcrop model. So what we can see here on the side is the photo that was taken and where it's incorporated into the model and then uh, the actual high resolution image itself. And then you can scroll through to the different shots that were taken and then zoom out to see exactly where they were geo-referenced within the model. Switching now to a new lithology, the fifth 3D digital outcrop model is of a marble outcrop that is a part of a band that runs through the study area. These are two photographs of the marble outcrop we scanned, which is approximately two meters by two meters, making it the smallest outcrop that we captured. Even so, there's still a lot of benefits to capturing these smaller and quicker scans as one can gather and retain a lot more uh, spatial information that otherwise wouldn't be able to be taken out of the field if you don't take these outcrop models. So this information can include such things as like the physical weathering behavior and the textures of specific units, in this case a marble, compared to maybe other lithological units, like how there's more blocky textures with the quartzofeldspathic gneiss. And these can also serve as quick representative models of the outcrops that can be used to train or refresh one's memory uh, with what the outcrops look like prior to going back into the field the next day. For the sixth and final 3D digital outcrop model, what we wanted to demonstrate was an outcrop that was partially obscured by cover and at ground level mostly. So here's the marble outcrop that is covered in tree roots and grasses and shows what a lot of exposures would more typically look like if you're just to stumble upon some outcrop in the field. That is to say that these aren't, you know, some of these more nicer ledges or vertical exposures. And the 3D digital outcrop model captures the spatial extent of this outcrop in very good detail, even without a clear and well-defined outcrop face or exposure. This allows almost an entire surface exposure to be mapped out, modeled, and brought back from the field. And as someone who really benefits from being able to see and manipulate uh, the 3D spatial relationships of an outcrop, I find these digital outcrop models to be informative over just, you know, some high resolution images of some outcrops that you have to kind of piece together. This allows for sort of real time uh, manipulation of the data and the spatial relationships. Overall, when looking at the final geologic map and information collected from a field campaign, we found that the digital outcrop models can be best added as an additional layer to the geologic map. By reviewing the map and being able to click on the digital outcrop models and bringing up the scene of an area of interest, these 3D digital outcrop models can augment the traditional information displayed on a field map and make this inter information uh, more interactive. This additional spatial information that can be brought back from the field, we find justifies packing these scanners on a field traverse. Some tips we found for uh, real-time digital outcrop scanning while actually in the field using this particular model of scanner. Um, one of the more important aspects was lighting. So this scanner wasn't actually uh, meant to be taken out in direct sunlight. There are models that are able to do that, but this one was not one of those. And because of that, we had to limit our model gathering to dawn, dusk, and overcast skies. And as long as these conditions were met, the models were 
very easy to capture and produced good data. Um, another interesting thing is that the coordinate system initialization can be done uh, directly with uh, the scanner at the start of a scan or via planar surfaces in real time while you're still in the field. So you can manually do this. Um, an important thing is to remove vegetation and brush to reveal maybe some of the more important surfaces prior to scanning. This is uh, the brush can definitely lead to oak crops being obscured and the model to be a little fuzzy uh, with these in place. Um, one definite benefit is to start the scan from one end of the outcrop, uh, so where it's long axis is, and then working continually in one direction to the end of the outcrop. We found that this was the best uh, to get uh, good overall scan qualities. And then finally, because we're trying to capture things in 3D, what we want to do is, uh, as you're actually scanning, vary the scanner's capture angle and distance from the outcrop within 3D space. So moving up close to the outcrop and further away and rotating it side to side to be able to get more of this 3D component as opposed to have just a flat scan across the entire face. Now what we want to show is just some examples of what you can do with the acquired data. So some applications of this and just as a quick refresher as to what the scanning data provides, we have the infrared light source being able to give XYZ spatial components as well as the camera output giving intensity and the red, green, blue values. An example for the infrared output data would be computing complex geometric measurements such as calculating what the total aggregate volume would be for this pile. So the idea here being that one could quickly calculate the total aggregate volume for these two irregular and complex shapes. Another example of an application for the scanner data that we can collect in the field is using the camera's intensity, red, green, and blue light values to inform an artificial intelligence lithological classification. So in this example, what we have is two different lithological units, a dark red shale and a sandstone. And what we're doing is looking at the intensity values of the light to be able to determine um, which lithological unit is which. And we do this by looking at a histogram of the intensity values. And you can assign a threshold value here between these two different peaks, this one being the dark shale and this one being the sandstone, and then go through and classify the different uh, lithologies based off this thresholding value. When we go ahead and use the classification algorithm for this example, we end up with approximately 95% of the data points classified with the correct lithology. Where the data points are incorrectly classified is where shadows are present within the scene. And this is to be expected as they change the intensity and color of the light that is reflected off the surface of an outcrop. Overall, some of the more important lessons we learned while taking these scanners out into the field is that the real-time 3D spatial measurements and annotations of outcrop models can be really beneficial, especially when you're adding geologic measurements that you've taken in the field to these 3D outcrop models. Um, the models allow for the creation of a 3D point cloud of specific representative geologic units. So if there's, say, six units within the field, you can have an outcrop scan that you can take out of the field at night and review to be able to inform the traverse the next day as to what units you might be running into again and what they actually look like in the 3D space. Um, there's also the ability to retain geologic information for sharing, mapping, and analysis, especially for people who weren't actually traversing in the field. And one nice benefit to this was the automatic positioning of the high resolution images for each outcrop. So you have the model and you can definitely zoom in with these higher resolution images to see some of the more important features that might have been captured. And finally, this allows for an additional data set to be gathered and brought back from the field, which um, is of course the seven different outputs from the scanner model. And with that, we'd be happy to take any questions that anyone would have. Thank you.